with Hello and Welcome. Today I'm here with the director and one of the stars of the new movie, Muru, um, Tarapa Kahi and Tame Iti. How's it going, guys? Doing good. Oh, it's good. Yeah. good. Yep. Amazing. Beautiful to be here in Brizzy. <laughs> yeah. well, Tarapa, I might start with you. Can you tell us a little bit about the film um, and what audiences can expect? Oh, really? Just give it all away like that? <laughs> Just the whole thing, right? What audio? Look, Muru is, and I, the idea of Muru is, and the concept of Muru is, when something goes wrong, how do you make it right? So that's that's what the title means. In terms of the film, we basically drive a bus deep inside a valley that New Zealand audiences have never been, which means that Australian audiences have never been into this valley. And what you can expect um, is something that I'll, I walked away from the Busan International Film Festival with just uh, a day and a half ago where someone just stood up in the, in the audience in the Q&A part and just said, Te arepa, this film has got all the feels. <laughs> and I was like, yes, yes. He goes, Man. made me sad, made me angry, made me happy, uh, made me hold on to my ass, put the seatbelt on. Uh, <laughs> it was such a roller coaster ride. I couldn't breathe for about 50 minutes. And uh, congratulations. And so I'm like, we're going to Brizzy. We're going to Australia a day and a half from now. And I can't wait to share it with all of our family relations and um, brothers and sisters over there. So yeah. it's got a bit of action, bit of political thriller aspects to it. But this is a, a heart drama set in a valley, a very isolated place. And it doesn't speak to the events of one day, which happened on the 15th of October 2007. It speaks to the entire century. Mm. So we there's so much to unpeel and, and discover in this film. Yeah. And I mean, it's interesting that you say that it, it has all the feels because it really is like presented as an action thriller, but has those really heartwarming moments as well. Um, as a director, how did you approach getting the right balance there to still make it like exciting and interesting, but still respectful and, and, you know, emotionally charged? Well, really through relationships of knowing these people, what happened to them, spending time with them and having this great friendship with Papa Tummy, you know, it's, there's always the opportunity here to show the human side of the story and not uh, torpedo it with just uh, meaningless action. So the action presented here is action that actually comes from big character motivations and arcs. And, you know, another thing that happened in, um, in one of our screenings with in Tummy's neighborhood was someone of, of great status in Tuhoi came up to me after the screening and said, this is the best depiction of 1916 I've ever seen. Congratulations, boy. Oh, wow. And um, so there was, you know, there's just layers and layers on this and it is, it's, it's a complex canvas, but the way it unfolds eventually in real time, probably about the halfway mark is, um, is gripping. I hope, and I hope that it speaks to audiences here. Yeah. yeah well, I, it is a huge opportunity for, for our village and yeah. for, for to, to to be able um to to share his papa his story to, to to the world yeah and but there's several there's several layers of of, of muru and the, the, the language the real uh the landscape and in the landscape and the beautiness of the Uru weather and 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 it resonates to the people that come from the village and um yeah yeah i'm i'm really happy that, that we didn't have to wait 100 years for us to be able to tell a story around that around those particular issues dear to our heart and uh, and through our own personal experiences the experiences of the village of the people of Kilda. Mm. Kilda. and tame you know, you guys, obviously, you mentioned that it's an artistic response to 200 years of history rather than a direct retelling um, of the raids. Uh, can you talk about why you took that approach and why it was important to build, you know, all of that history in? Well, you, you mean they, they're making another movie or they, 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 they what happened in, in, uh, in 2007? Basically, Tame's auntie stood up in a meeting that we had and she said, she laid this down. She said, is this a story about one day? And I said, yes, because at that time, oh, yeah. we had constructed quite a faithful chronological sequence of events involving one day. And yeah. she said, boy, what a waste of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She goes, 
how can you tell the story of one day when they've been doing this to us for over a hundred years? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, I can't do sci-fi. I'm not a, and I've written this film. And um, then I've heard what she said. Yeah, I received yeah. what she said. And then we started having a brand new conversation. Yeah. And there's no cheap shots in this film. There's no easy picks. This is a, a heavily constructed, well thought out devised piece where we've succumbed and surrendered completely to the, to the valley. And one of the things is that we shot this during COVID, which meant that some of the greatest heavyweights in New Zealand came back to New Zealand. Mm. So we, we edited uh, with John Gilbert, who received an Oscar for Hacksaw Ridge. So he was in quarantine at the time that we were about to get started, slipped in the script while he was in New Zealand. Wouldn't have happened any other time. And he said, <laughs> this is awesome. I'm in. Yeah, yeah. Same with our stunt coordinator. He had just returned from this big, uh, huge blockbuster somewhere else. So we were able to bring all of these great heavyweight people to help us tell the story as well. Yeah, it was incredible. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you would never imagine that, like, I mean, he had nothing else to do, right, while I was in quarantine other than read the script, I suppose. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so you also got, you, you guys worked with the community there as well. So you shot in the valley. Yeah. Um, why was that so important to you? And, and what do you think that brought to the movie as well? There's always a temptation, especially in New Zealand at this point in time, to um, take the Netflix approach, which is shoot in the West Auckland warehouse. <laughs> And that was, a, that was an avenue that we were never going to tell or take because the only way to tell the story was with Tuhoi in Tuhoi, being guided by Tuhoi. And that basically means listening to Papa Tummy every day. And that's a good thing because when you can put yourself in that position, you're winning. You're winning um, in terms of cultural authenticity, in terms of visioning, and in terms of, of, of being moved and moving alongside the valley and the community. So there was never an alternative. There was never another option for us. It was only about um, yeah, well, in the valley and being in the valley. Yeah, yeah it was it was big for the village. I mean, they were yeah. quite excited. It was like a like a, the big circus in town, you know, when everybody turned off all the all the wagons and the horses <laughs> and the all you know, it was huge. Yeah. The production was just huge. Mm. And and yeah, it, it kind of there, there was some dissenting voices, you know. Oh yeah, there was one person who didn't appreciate uh, seventy vehicles on the rugby field. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, we got a game. Yeah, we got yeah, training yeah, on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, well, yeah. we can play too. We, we got a, <laughs> We bought our boots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so so, so it, it, everybody was like, taking. At the end of the day, that the community as a whole, they took part in it, and yeah. they they um, even that even now they're talking about the villages. Yeah, the villages yeah. are coming to uh, actually going to the movies. Yeah, even oh, the okay. ones that they didn't what too sure about it, but yeah. they they've seen the movies, mm -hmm. and uh, and so um, yeah, no, so it's been really good. It's really good for them too to be able to. For us again to talk about some of these things, mm. Mm. where are we going to? What is happening? You know, and and for us to to share that. And uh, only just last last week, I took my mokopuna, the two young mokopuna, uh, Hawiki and um, yeah, and uh, and Teoro, the sister. Mm. Now you're very young, and so I took them and shot them a kai ice cream and that, and they sat there. They watched the film right through. Yeah. And, uh, and it really, it really interesting to how the children tell their story, mm -hmm. how they see things, mm -hmm. in the way they view it. In um, so I haven't, I had a short conversation because I had to, because I'm, I've been moving, but I have run home and uh, and talked to the mother, and uh, so it was really interesting hearing the mother talking about her children telling the story about it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's actually, it's something that we'll always remember to, to the day they our age, yeah. you know, yeah. and um, to, to share that kind of story. They were kids on the bus. They were on the bus. Well, they, were, oh, they were on the bus. The, yeah. They were, they were yeah. in, the, in the bus themselves. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, Tama, you play yourself in the movie. Yeah. Um, as an artist, how did you find that? Do you think it was more or less difficult playing yourself than playing someone else? Yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, and I mean, I work in theatre myself, and mm. uh, which, which has helped me, I mean, just the layers, you know, you know it's it become a breathing exercise for me, 
in yeah. the fine, they get that, they get that, that the emotion and the feeling, they capture their moments. Mm. Perfect. Well, thanks so much for your time, guys. And Muru opens up today, so make sure you get out and see it.